Hello, Mr. Joyce here. Hope you're all safe and well. Now, a question for you. Which shape do you think is the strongest? There can be arguments for all the different shapes that we know uh, for their different properties, but most architects will have you believe that the strongest shape is the triangle. Let's have a look why. We can see the triangle in all structures around the world, whether it's bridges, roller coasters, cranes, motorbikes, and even famous architectural designs such as the Eiffel Tower and Epcot from Disney. If we were to apply downward force on these three shapes, the triangle is the only shape that won't collapse. Why is this? Where well, it's all to do with angles and how they're fixed based on the opposite side of length. Hence, why we see the triangle in most structures in the world today. So next time you're on a socially distant walk, have a look to see what triangles you can spot in the different structures there are on the way. Right, now my next question for you. Do you know the different types of triangles there are and what their properties are? Pause the video, have a chat with a family member or jot it down on a piece of paper and I'll reveal the answers next. There are three main types of triangles. The equilateral triangle, which has three equal sides of length and three equal angles. The isosceles triangle, which has two equal sides of length and two equal angles. And the oddest of the three, the scaling triangle, which has three unequal sides and three unequal angles. In addition to this, any triangle containing a 90 degree angle is known as a right angled triangle. This can either be an isosceles or a scaling triangle. Right, the last important thing to know about triangles is that the interior angles, the angles inside the triangle, all add up to 180, which is the same as angles on a straight line, which actually I can prove. If I was to tear off the angles, and then very quickly, three angles joined together on a straight line, which is the same as a protractor size, 180. Now this week, you're going to need to know how to calculate missing angles for different types of triangles. So here's some tips on how to do that. My first example has 65 degrees in one corner and it has a right angle in the other, which is 90 degrees. So I need to add those two together, which gives me 155, and then subtract that from 180, which leaves me with 25 degrees. So angle A is 25 degrees. My second example is an equilateral triangle. I know it's equilateral because it's got those lines on each, those short lines on each line, which tells me that they are the same length. So that means that each angle, it's going to be 60 degrees. My third example is an isosceles triangle. Again, I know that because it's got those two little lines that tell you that two of those sides are the same length. So that means if one corner is 65, that does mean that the other corner is going to be 65. So I need to add those two together, which gives me 130. Subtract that from 180, which means that the missing angle is 50 degrees. And my final example, example four, the top angle is 130. Again, I know this is an isosceles triangle, so that means X and Y are going to be the same size. So first of all, I need to take 130 away from 180, which leaves me with 50 degrees. And then I divide that by two or half it, which means both X and Y are 25 degrees. Okay, that's all for now. Hopefully that's helped. Remember though, don't be a square, be a triangle. Bye.